Do you know the reason why Jell-O today tastes richer, more thrillingly good than it ever has before? Well, it's all because of Jell-O's wonderful new process that locks in Jell-O's grand and glorious flavor. Yes, today Jell-O gives you more of the richness that for over 40 years has made Jell-O America's favorite gelatin dessert. Because now this richness is locked right into the tiny Jell-O particles to bring you extra enjoyment. Try all of Jell-O's six delicious flavors. Rosy pink strawberry, crimson raspberry, ruby red cherry, golden orange, sunny lemon, and emerald green lime. All of these tempting Jell-O flavors offer you bright, brilliant beauty and flavor that makes you think of the juicy ripe fruit itself. Flavor that is locked in for your added pleasure. To prove how swell Jell-O's locked in flavor really is, open a package of Jell-O. Notice that there's no telltale aroma, no sign of escaping fragrance and flavor. Then dissolve the tiny Jell-O particles and notice how Jell-O's captive goodness comes pouring out in a rush of richness. Get Jell-O tomorrow in all six delicious flavors and thrill to the marvelous new delight of Jell-O's locked in flavor. in played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we turn back the clock and take you to the drugstore across the street from the NBC building here in Hollywood. The time is exactly 15 minutes before this broadcast. Take it away, drugstore. Hurry up and order your sandwich, will you, Mary? We'll be on the air in a few minutes. A sandwich? Yes. I'm a growing girl. I want meat and potatoes. <laughs> well, all right. Order a meat sandwich. And the potato chips here are very crispy. Every Sunday we have to eat in the drugstore. Why don't you take me to the Brown Derby once in a while? Mary, I'm not going into the Brown Derby until they hang my picture in the main dining room with the rest of the big movie stars. They can't treat me that way. What do you mean? Every time I want to see that drawing of myself, I've got to go in and wash my hands. <laughs> Well, it's, it's not right. Oh, stop complaining. <laughs> Say, Jack, look at this item on the menu. Jack Benny Special, 35 cents. A Jack Benny Special? What is it? A minute steak with a transfusion. <laughs> oh, these soda jerks think they're so smart. Hey, Gilroy, what do I have to do to get a little service around here? Take it easy, blue eyes. <laughs> Hello, Mary. What'll it be? I'll have a hot roast beef sandwich, mashed potatoes, lettuce and tomato salad, and apple pie with tutti frutti ice cream. Mary, you haven't got time to eat all that. Okay, don't toot the fruity. <laughs> I'll save that stuff for the program. Say, Gilroy, I think I'll just have a cup of coffee and a donut. A what? A donut. One of those over there with the powdered sugar on it. That's a plain donut. I forgot to dust them off this morning. <laughs> Oh, 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 well, then never mind. Maybe I'll just have a cup of... Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Jackson. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hey, Jack, get a load of Phil, uh, Phil's slacks. Uh, they button on the side. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll be darned. I put on a pair of Alice's. <laughs> <coughs> oh, my goodness. Why don't you open your eyes when you get up in the morning? They're open, Jackson, but they don't work till noon. <laughs> no. What a be, Twitch. Well, uh... <laughs> Smart guy, give me a Phil Harris special. Okay. One ham omelet, put a wave in it. <laughs> hmm, put a wave in it. It's the most egotistical thing I ever heard. Here's your order, Mary. Thanks. <laughs> oh, Jack, look who's down the other end of the counter. It's Virgil Reimer, our funny sound man. That's what he thinks. Nobody speak to him. He's getting too fresh. Hello, Virgil. What do you have? Get long distance on the phone. I want a Denver sandwich. <laughs> Oh, he's... he's so clever. Say, Virgil, you sure got a lot of laughs at Camp Hahn last Sunday. You were the funniest thing on the Benny program. Yeah, and imagine what I could do if old Poison Puss didn't hold me down. <laughs> hmm, Poison Puss? That's a fine way to talk about our sponsor. He means you. I know who he means. 
Wise guy. No kidding, Virg. You're terrific. Do you get many fan letters? I'll say. Remember that little poodle that used to run out and bring in my mail? Yeah? <laughs> well, I got a St. Bernard now. <laughs> That's positively the worst joke I ever heard. <laughs> I thought it was kind of cute. Me too. Yeah? Hmm. You know, Virgil, I thought you had a lot of fun working for Benny. Fun? That old slave driver does everything but chase us across the ice. Well, that's the last straw. Now, listen here, Virgil. Oh, hello, Mr. Legree. Where's your whip? <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. You get over to NBC and set up our props for the program. Now, scram. See what I told you, Gil? <laughs> All right, get going, get going. Hey, Virg, should I slip my moth and Mickey? <laughs> you stay out of this. Hey, where's my omelet? Here you are, Twitch. You want something to drink with it? No, thanks. I'm on the wagon. He never heard a coffee in the morning. <laughs> Hurry up with mine, will you? Say, Mr. Benny, I just got on the weighing machine, and how much oh, do you think... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I just got on the weighing machine, and how much do you think... Uh, how, I... uh, how are you feeling, kid? All right, I guess. Good, good. I thought I had fallen arches for a while, but I wasn't pulling my socks up. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Oh, I see. Thank heaven my girl can use those arch supporters I bought. Why don't you buy them, Jack? Because I don't need them. What makes you think I got flat feet? Plop, plop, plop. <laughs> all right, all right, young lady. Just for that, I'm not going to pick up your check today. I can carry it over to the cashier myself. I was going to pay it, too. Say, Mr. Benny, I just got on the weighing machine and... Yes? How much do you think I weigh? How much, Dennis? 141 pounds, stripped. <laughs> Trip. I took the scale in the phone booth. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, you better watch yourself, young man. Huh? And you know what else, Mr. Benny? Uh, when I put a penny in the machine, I got one of those little cards with my fortune on it. Oh, your fortune, eh? What did it say, kid? You're lucky you can sing. <laughs> now, there's a machine that knows its business. Hey, Gilroy, where's my coffee? Did you send to Brazil for it? Si, si, senora. Smart Alec. I wouldn't even eat here if the Brown Derby wasn't so careless about where they hung my picture. Uh, you ought to wash your hands here sometime. <laughs> well, I'll be done. Hey! Kids, you better snap into it. We're on the air in a few minutes. Okay, Don. See you later, Jackson. I'm going to run ahead and find out what my boys are going to play today. What? You mean you don't know what numbers you're doing? Weren't you at rehearsal? We didn't have a rehearsal. Frankie left the cards and chips home. <laughs> oh. See you in the joint, fellas. Be right up. Oh, say, Don. Don, come here a minute, will you? Yeah. Uh, when you introduce me today, I wish you'd do me a favor and say I just started my new picture at Warner Brothers with Ann Sheridan. Well, are you making a picture with Ann Sheridan? Yes, and it might be on the program today. You know, it might be a nice subject to talk about. You know, inject a little romance. What do you mean, romance? You're playing the part of her father, aren't you? I had that out with the director, and I'm now her husband. My new role will be great for the picture. It won't hurt the makeup business, either. <laughs> All right. Now, don't forget, Don... Uh, Warner Brothers, huh? Yeah. Be with you in a second, Mary. I want to get a tube of shaving cream. Hey, mister, um, uh, give me a tube of shaving cream, will you? Got to turn in an old tube, you know. Got to turn in an old one. You know. <laughs> Look, I haven't got an old tube. Now, hurry, will you? Government get... regulations. <laughs> But look, look. I don't make the laws, you know. Now, look, look. Wait. Come on, look. Jack. We'll be late for the program. I'm coming. Now, uh, look, mister, forget the shaving cream. Just give me a cigar. Got to have an old one, you know. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> forget the whole thing. Come on, Mary. Let's go.
Jersey Bounce, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who has just started his new picture for Warner Brothers with lovely Ann Sheridan, Jack Glamour Boy Benny. Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny, your glamour boy, like Don said. <laughs> uh, heaven knows I'd never go that far. Uh, Don, how in the world did you ever find out about my new picture with Ann Sheridan? Did you uh, read about it in some column? Hmm? Did you? No, Jack. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen anything about it in the papers. Well, then, how did you ever hear about it? I was trying to keep it a secret. Uh, how'd you find out, Don? Did a little bird tell you? Yeah, an old gray canary. <laughs> canary. But it's the truth, Don. Uh, Ann Sheridan is my new leading lady, and she sure is a peach to work with. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, her... her... her enunciation is so clear and bell-like, and her... her diction is simply marvelous, you know? And her... her... That's Benny for you. With him, it's her diction. <laughs> Well, she is beautiful, I'll admit that. And confidentially, Don, I think her husband, George Brent, is a little jealous of me. You know? What do you mean? Well, he happened to visit the set uh, the other day, just as Ann and I were doing a love scene. And <laughs> right in the middle of a kiss, he got mad and walked out. Well, naturally, why did you kiss him? <laughs> I didn't kiss him, I kissed Miss Sheridan. Pay attention, will you? Anyway, Don, um... I think that this picture will be one of my best screen efforts to date. In fact, uh, I'm already getting fan letters on it. Really? Yep. He gets a bill from Bullocks and he calls it a fan letter. <laughs> I'm talking about real movie fans that write in. Don, you know that little poodle that used to run out and bring in my mail? What poodle? <laughs> well, I got a great day now. <laughs> uh, pretty clever, eh, Dozzy? Some ad lib. Now, wait a minute, you. That's my gag. You said St. Bernard. I said Great Dane. <laughs> it's a different gag altogether. You steal any more of my stuff and I'll play ring around your nosy. <laughs> oh, go sit down. Say, Jackson, do you think there's a chance of getting me in that new picture you're making? Well, I don't know, Phil. I'm Ann, he I'm Ann Sheridan's husband. And what part could you play? Well, if you're her husband, she's got to have a sweetheart. <laughs> Listen, Maestro, I wouldn't make any more cracks like that if I were you. Lest next season, when I say play, Phil, I'll be addressing Phil Spitalny. <laughs> so watch it. Oh, you couldn't fire me, Jackson. I got too much on you. Oh, yeah? Well, listen, Phil. If you're referring to that night in Phoenix, that young lady was my aunt... I've never been to Phoenix. Hmm. Why don't I keep my big mouth shut? <laughs> Anyway, Phil, don't think I can't get along without you. Say, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. You met me in the drugstore, remember? Oh. Oh, yes. Say, Mr. Benny, can I come out to the studio and watch you work on your picture someday? Why, certainly, Dennis. Anytime you feel like it. That's swell. And say, while I'm out there, would you mind introducing me to a... to a certain somebody? <laughs> As if I didn't know, huh? Uh, who do you mean, Dennis? Oh, you'll tease me about it. No, no, no. Who do you want to meet? Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> Well, that I never figured. Hmm, what a, well, it's about time for your song, kid, so let's have it. Okay. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Would you be interested in a toupee with no cuffs on it? Get out of here! <laughs> you ought to see his head, folks. The only thing he can part on it is his eyebrows. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> Remember you, you 
you're the one who said I love you too. I do, didn't you know? I remember to a distant bell and stars that fell like rain out of the blue. When my life is through and the angels are I Remember You, sung by Dennis Day, who would rather meet Edward G. Robinson than Ann Sheridan. And now, folks... I only wanted to meet Robinson so he would introduce me to Miss Sheridan. Well, why go to all that trouble? I could introduce you to Ann. Well, I wanted to meet her for nothing. <laughs> it wouldn't cost you anything. And now, folks... You charged me 25 cents to meet Barbara Stanwyck. <laughs> You met Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Taylor. <laughs> and now, folks, if that isn't worth a quarter, then I don't know what. And now, folks, Mr. Don Wilson, that eminent American author, has written another of his famous one-act plays. Take it, Mr. Wilson. The scene, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't run off, Dennis. You're in this. You're going to be an old prospector. Okay. Here, Phil, hold my yo-yo. <laughs> Dennis, put that away. Go ahead, Don. The scene, ladies and gentlemen, is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Rufus Lemaire, who live in a cabin on the edge of the Mojave Desert in a desolate part of the West. They're just finishing their evening meal. Music, please. Well. Well, Sari, I thought our supper tonight was fine. There's nothing like barbecued coyote. Not only that, I got a fur coat out of it. Yep, and that, uh, that jello we had for dessert was mighty tempting. Where did you get it? I walked 85 miles to our neighborhood grocer. Well, it sure was worth it. Say, Ruth, I seen a newspaper in town, and guess what? What? It says that men ain't gonna wear cuffs on their pants anymore. They ain't, eh? Say, I wonder if I got cuffs on my pants. Why don't you take off your boots sometime and find out? <laughs> One of these days, I'm a-going to. I wonder who that is. Come in. Hmm. Hello, stranger. Who are you? I'm a prospector. And for three weeks now, I've been lost in the desert without food or drink. I'm starving, I tell you, starving. Be calm, old timer. Sit down. Okay, hold my yo-yo. <laughs> hmm. A fine prospector. I'm starving, I tell you. Starving! Uh, don't worry. We'll take care of you. Yes, I'll fix you a nice hot dish of beef stew. Beef stew? Yep. No, thank you. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> hmm. I'm starving, I tell you. Starving! Be patient. We'll think of something, stranger. Say, would you like a nice lettuce and tomato salad? What kind of dressing? French or Thousand Island? <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> hmm. I'm starving, I tell you, starving. Well, you've got to eat something. Isn't there anything you'd like? Yes. Have you got some tempting and delicious jello? Jello? I'm sorry, partner. We had some, but we ate every bit of it. I'm going to make it again tomorrow, though. Okay, I'll be back. 
So long. So long, stranger. I'm starving, I tell you, starving, starving. Hmm. Ah, folks, what other product can command such loyalty? Uh, that little drama, ladies and gentlemen, was written by our own Don Wilson. And Don, that's the best one yet. Oh, I don't deserve too much credit for it, Jack. You see, that was a true story. I believe you. <laughs> now, um... <laughs> now, go over to your chairs and sit down. <clears throat> and now, folks... <laughs> and now, folks, I would like to announce that our program next Sunday will originate from San Francisco, where we are going to dedicate the brand-new NBC Studios. In fact, we're going to do their very first broadcast. Well, I guess a new building can take it. Don't worry. If I can just get my writers out of Hurley's Bar and into a Turkish bath, we'll be okay. <laughs> now, kids, I uh, gave all of you your railroad tickets, so I better check them over to see if everything's all right. Phil, what's your uh, Pullman reservation? I'm sleeping in car 19, lower five. Check. What's yours, Dennis? Car 19, lower five. Check. Now, wait a minute. Never mind. <laughs> uh, what's yours, Don? Car 19, lower five. <laughs> uh, check. What's, uh, what's yours, Mary? Upper five. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Don't mention it. Well, everything's okay, so remember, fellas, be at the station one half hour before train time. Now, take it easy, Jackson. Three of us can't sleep in one berth. Oh, of course not. We won't be comfortable. Listen, Don, in the days of Vaudeville, the four Marx brothers slept in one berth, and they had a harp besides. <laughs> so stop beefing. Well, Jack, if I was as thin as the four Marx brothers, I wouldn't complain. Don, the tickets are bought, and that's the way it's going to be. That's a lot of hooey about the Marx brothers. How do you know they all slept in one berth? Jack was in the baggage car with Fink's mule. <laughs> You said it. In those days, when I said I was going to hit the hay, I meant it. <laughs> anyway, fellas, it's a short trip, so don't worry about it. Say, Mr. Benny, where are you going to sleep? Well, Dennis, on account of my insomnia, I think I'll just sit up in the chair car and read. I'll get a magazine. Well, buy a popular mechanics and find out how three guys can lay down in one berth. <laughs> Who said lay down? Lay down, or, or lie down, which is correct. A lot of good that'll do us. <laughs> Listen, kids, will you please stop being so fussy? Say, how am I going to get up to San Francisco by carrier pigeon? Virgil, you're not going to be with us next week. You can tune in and listen. I wouldn't listen to this program if it was the pot of gold and I had the only telephone in the country. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you wouldn't, eh? That's topping them, Jack. I wasn't trying to top them. I don't want to hear any more about our trip. We're going there. We're going to open up the new studios. And immediately, as soon as... Hmm. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Oh, hello, Rochester. What do you want? Well, boss, he did it before and he did it again. What? What are you talking about? Carmichael just came out of hibernation and I can't find the gas man. <laughs> You mean my polar bear woke up already? Why, he's not supposed to come out of hibernation till May 1st. He's early. So was the gas man. <laughs> Stop dreaming things up. Tell me, Rochester, was Carmichael in a good mood? Well, yes and no. What do you mean, yes and no? When he first got up, he came over and hugged me and squeezed me and even tried to kiss me. Well. And then he put salt and pepper on me. <laughs> Oh, that cute little rascal. I bet he's as thin as a rail. Uh-huh. Uh, you better give him something to eat, to Rochester. A lot of nourishing food. Uh-huh. Uh, what that bear needs is something fattening. I know one hunk of fudge you ain't gonna get. <laughs> oh, Rochester, stop. You know he loves you. Now, here's what you do. Give Carmichael a nice cold shower and then comb his hair out. Might be all uh, matted, you know? He don't like it when I comb his hair. Well, then give him a slap on his nose and make him behave. Let him know who's boss. I let him know once, then he let me know, and now there's no question about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, all right, Rochester, just leave him alone. When I come home, I'll take care of everything. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I'm going up to San Francisco with you, ain't I? Yes, of course. Well, on this trip, am I going to be under 12 or a Pullman Porter again? <laughs> You're getting a ticket. Now, goodbye. Mm, darn that Carmichael. Every year, the gas company wants to take my meter out. Oh, well, play, Phil. <laughs> Here's a gay glistening dessert as bright and beautiful as spring itself. Jello cubes with strawberries. It's an enticing treat that will lend a grand touch of color and flavor to any meal you serve it with. Our folks will enjoy it. And just listen to how easy it is to make. Simply dissolve one package of orange jello in a pint of hot water. Next, turn into a shallow pan and chill until firm. Cut the jello into cubes and then arrange them in sherbet glasses with sweetened sliced strawberries using quick frozen strawberries if you wish. Serve either plain or with cream. What a dessert, so rich and inviting to look at, so gloriously good. Make the family this wonderful combination of sweet, juicy red strawberries and clear golden cubes of orange jello. Get several packages of orange jello tomorrow. But be sure when you do to get genuine jello because jello's flavor is locked in for your added enjoyment. the last number of the 29th program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from the new NBC studios in San Francisco. So long, Jack. See you at the train. Wait a minute, Mary. We've all got to stick around today and put on a little entertainment for men in uniform. They'll all be coming in here in a few minutes. Oh, well, I'll just have time to write a poem. Oh, soldiers, sailors, and Marines, you're the nicest guys save I've it, ever seen. Save it, save it, save it. Good night, folks. <laughs> Friends, the same folks who make Jell-O make another wonderful dessert. Jell-O puddings. Three luscious puddings that you make with milk. Try Jell-O chocolate pudding. A smoother, mellower pudding you never tasted. And what a world of rich, homemade goodness it has. A grand chocolate flavor developed especially for Jell-O puddings by the famous Walter Baker chocolate people. So tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, ask for all three Jell-O puddings. Chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. They're just like grandma's, only more so.